we are going to have some fun with this one. Ever wondered how the famous turtles versus hare race would go if simulated on the computer? Well, you're about to find out. But first, let's see what we will be creating. So there are several things that we need to put together. The race is quite simple. We have runners and move them on the racetrack based on the randomly generated number that will be the number of spaces to move and whether the runner moves forward or backward on the racetrack. So first we will have a racetrack. The length of the track is flexible and so is the number of runners. Now yes, the race is about turtles running against a hare, but we'll take it uh, one step further and allow for any number of runners. So I am sure you can already see that we will be using a two-dimensional array where each row represents portion of the length of the track and each column is a track for one individual runner. So if there are two runners, we'll have two columns. Three runners will have three columns, etc. Now you can see that there will be a symbol representing a runner displayed on the track. So T for turtle and H for hare. All runners start at the top and we will move the symbol for each runner as they move through the track. Now in order to simulate the race, we need some rules that will manage the movement for each runner. And the rules are as follows. So as you can see, the turtles will have three moves, fast plot, slip and slow plot. And when fast plot happens, we will move the turtle three squares to the right, basically mean moving it forward. If a slip happens, that will move six squares backwards. And if slow plot, then one square to the right. And here has sleep, big hop, big slip, small hop and small slip. And the equivalent of the move is for sleep is no move at all. And big hop is nine spaces. And for example, small slip is two squares to the left, meaning we're moving uh, backwards. Now the interesting part is the percentage of time these moves should happen. So for example, fast plot should happen 50% of the time for the turtles. Slip is only 20 and slow plot is 30% of the time for the total of 100% of the time. So how are we going to calculate the percentages? Well, let's take the turtles again. So we will simply generate a random number between 1 and 100. And we will check if the number is between 1 and 50. Because statistically, numbers between 1 and 50 will be generated 50% of the time. If you think about it, any number between 1 and 100 has a 1% chance that it will be generated. So a range of numbers will have the equal percentage of chance as the range is. So between 1 and 50, it's 50%. Between 1 and 60, it would be 60% and so forth. So if a number between 1 and 50 is generated, then that represents one of the moves. And it represents the fast plot because that should happen 50% of the time. So for slip, which happens 20% of the time, any number in a range 1 and 20 has a 20% chance but any range between 1 and 20 has 20% chance. For example, 51 to 70. That's 20 range and that's 20% chance if you generate a num number between 1 and 100. And at the same for 30% generation, we simply generate a number between 71 and 100, which is 30 range, and that will give us 30% chance. And if that happens, we will perform the slow plot. And of course, we will do the same for the hair. Now, of course, we can make our own rules, but for this exercise, there are the rules that we will follow. We will also want to display each move for each player. This is not necessary. We could simply just watch the race by watching the players move along the track. However, displaying the moves will allow us to verify that our logic for the runner movements works correctly. And of course, we need rules that will finish the race and declare the winner. This one is simple, the runner that reaches the finish line first is the winner. But if multiple runners finish at the same time, then all these runners will be declared winners. And one more thing, we will process the race as a series of rounds, and in each round, all runners will perform a move. 
We could just let the program run on its own by simply looping until the race finishes, but to have a better control and also to actually see what is happening and how our runners are performing, we will start each round with a simply pressing a key on our keyboard. Once the key is pressed, all runners perform a move and the program will wait for us to press a key to advance to the next round of race. Alright, are you ready to code? Let's do it! But before we hop to our Visual Studio, let me just say a few words about the approach I chose for this project. The logic for this project is not earth shattering, in fact it is fairly simple. However, I am going to use a complete object oriented approach. And the reason is that I want to make the program as extensible as possible. So when we decide to add another runner, we will be able to do so simply by creating the class for the runner, while all the logic and other classes remain the same. Using this approach, you will be able to not only practice the logical aspect of the exercise, but also to practice your object-oriented programming skills. Ok, the first class we can create is one that will be our track. As mentioned, we will make the track size flexible, but ultimately it will be just a simple two-dimensional array that will be updated after each round. And our track will consist of cells, basically one line will represent one row, and the number of columns will depend on the number of runners. So we can declare a constant that will hold the length of the track, and a second constant that will hold the number of runners. Since one runner equals one track, which in turn equals one column, then the number of runners will represent the number of columns, while the track length will represent the number of rows. So for starters, we can set the length to just 10 and the number of runners to 2, which would be the turtle and the hare. Now we can declare our two-dimensional array and let's make it a string because we will hold the string, which would be the name of the runner or a character for it at least. And of course we need to initialize the array and we can do that in the constructor of the class. Now the first dimension represents the rows, which is the track length and the second dimension is the number of columns, which is the number of runners. However, since the indexes start from zero, we want to actually use one more index to the track length. So we will use plus one. And this way, the indexes will go from zero to ten for the total of eleven indexes. And the way we'll use it is that the index zero will be our starting line and we'll have ten rows of the track length, with the tenth row being the finish line. Alright, moving on to displaying the racetrack. So let's create a method for that. And this is fairly straightforward. We'll simply loop through the complete array, meaning we need to use a nested loop because we are looping through two-dimensional array. So one loop loops through the rows and the other loop, the inner loop, loops through the columns. And I'll move everything one line down from the top just so we don't start right at the top of the screen. And then we can start the loop. So again, we are looping through rows and through all the columns. And as you can see, I'm starting from indexes 0, but the track length, I'm less than equal to track length. I'm using this so I actually go all the way to the last index, which is the index 10, which is our finish line. For the number of runners, we'll start from the column 0 and column 1. So column 0 would be turtle and column 1 would be hare. So we don't have any extra indexes we need. So now we could just display the cell of each index. So we want to separate each cell by a border. But here's the trick. The cells are empty or in other words they are null. They do not have any value, not even an empty space. So if the cell is null, we want to display an empty cell with a border around it. But if the cell contains the runner, which is the T or H letters, then we want to display the border around that cells too, but we want to also display the actual character. So we check if the cell is null, and if it is, we'll just display an empty space and the borders. And if the cell is not null, that means it contains the runner's character, we will display the character with a border around it. So we'll simply use an if statement. So if the cell we are currently looping through is null, we'll simply display the border itself. Otherwise, meaning there's a runner in it, we'll display the runner. So we'll display 
the cell from the trucks again indexes of i and c and we'll add the border and of course notice the spacing the empty cell contains two spaces then the border and then one extra space however the cell with the runner in it contains the runner symbol which is the tracks i and c with the indexes and then an extra space border and another extra space and this is done to make sure that the cells line up properly because the width of the cells needs to be the same so whether the cell is empty or not it is four spaces wide now after we finish each row we want to move to the next line so we can display another row now there's one more thing actually you know let me just show you how this displays so far so to run it we'll simply create an object of our track class in our program and now we'll simply call the display truck method so let's run it so as you can see there is no border on the left it looks like we only have one track and we can add that very easily though so before we start writing each row we can simply write the border before we start drawing everything in the inner loop and to make it even more interesting we can also display the number of each row this is not necessary but it will be a good visual aid for us later when we verify that our runners move across the truck as expected so here after i start every outer loop i will simply display the left border and the number of the line and then in the inner loop we will display the cells depending on whether they're null we'll display just the empty cell with the border or we'll display the runner's character and the border around it all right so let's give it another try and you can see that now we have two racetracks one that will be for the turtle and one that will be for the hare and we have each of the cells numbered or each line from zero which is the starting position to 10 which is going to be the finish line so now our racetrack is displaying as we intended all right so far so good there's one more thing we want to do in this class and that is to display the runner's position on the truck so i created a method for that but currently we do not have any runner classes ready so i am going to leave this method empty for now and we will revisit it once we create our runner classes so for now this is our track class and now we are ready to start creating classes for the runners so thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video